Hello folks, number one here has the milligrams of oxygen given, that's right there, and the grams of carbon dioxide demanded, and that's right there. Now, I can convert oxygen to carbon dioxide using this chemical equation, but this 5 and this 3 are in molecules or moles of molecules. They're not in grams. I'm given something in milligrams, and I'm expected to get something in grams, so I'm going to have to convert to moles first. Then I can convert from oxygen to carbon dioxide. Then I'm going to have to convert this down to grams again, using your old friend the periodic table. And this is how you do it. 108 milligrams of, what is this? What is this? This is oxygen, folks. Oxygen. Times... In order to convert this to moles, I need to convert this to grams first. So there are a thousand milligrams in one gram. This is oxygen still. You see the milligrams of oxygen canceling out there? Woo! And now the grams of oxygen. So I happen to know that there are 32, on the periodic table, it's 16.00 grams of oxygen in a mole of oxygen. So O2 is just going to be two of that, so that's 32.00 grams of oxygen in one mole of oxygen. If you're using a different periodic table than mine, you might get 15.9994 grams of O in a mole of O, but you're still, still going to have something like 32.00 grams of oxygen when you add those O's up. Now the grams of oxygen cancel. Woo! I have moles of oxygen. Is that what I want? No, 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 no. I want moles of carbon dioxide. So here I'm talking about five moles of oxygen and three moles of carbon dioxide. That means that five moles of oxygen is three moles of carbon dioxide, if you don't mind some bad grammar there. So moles of oxygen cancel. Woo! And we got three moles of carbon dioxide. Now, are they asking for moles of carbon dioxide? <laughs> no. They're asking for grams of carbon dioxide. So I add those up on the periodic table, and I get 44.0. I think it's 44.01 or 0.02 or something like that. Grams of carbon dioxide in one mole of carbon dioxide. And notice that I have arranged this just so that the moles of carbon dioxide cancel. Woo! And I have grams of carbon dioxide at the end here. <laughs> and then on the calculator, I'm going to go 108 divided by 1,000 divided by 32 times 3 divided by 5 times 44. Notice that everything on the bottom is divide. Everything on top is times. So I go... 108 divided by a thousand. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this in a couple of in a couple of goes over here because my memory she ain't what she used to be. 108 divided by a thousand times what was that? It was no, it was divided by 32. Okay, so divided by 32 times three divided by five times 44 times three divided by five times 44. Yeah, that's that's right. That's all you need to do. All in one go, and I got 0 0.0891 grams of carbon dioxide. 0 0.0891 grams of carbon dioxide. Now, does that jive? Does this answer make any sense in terms of uh, what I would expect in such a problem? Let's see. 100 milligrams. 100 milligrams is a very small amount. So that so it jives that I will also get a very small amount of of product of carbon dioxide. This was 89 grams. I mean 89 milligrams. It came from 108 milligrams of oxygen. Yeah, that totally jives. If you go if you got something like 8.9 grams, then we would start to raise some eyebrows. If you can raise one eyebrow at a time, then you would do that. Unfortunately, I don't have such facial musculature, so. I have to raise both eyebrows. But in this case, we did, we did not get some something ridiculous like 8.91 grams coming from 100 milligrams. So 
I do not need to raise any eyebrows. Number two, how many molecules of nitrogen gas are required to form? Oh, okay, so this is another problem just like the, the, the previous one. So it says assume excess H2. Yeah, that's, that's nice. So that, that just means we can ignore the H2. So let me start with 19.0 grams of ammonia. And I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass of ammonia, which I happen to know is something like 17.0 grams of ammonia in one mole of ammonia. When you do your quiz or your exam, you're going to have to, I mean, I, I just recommend that you use some more significant figures. I'm just uh, rounding this off for the sake of convenience because I don't need to have exactly the right answer. I just need to show you how to do this or actually remind you how to do this because I know you just got done doing this in WebAssign. So grams of ammonia cancel. Woo! I have moles of ammonia. Um, what am I looking for again? Oh, nitrogen gas. Okay, so there's two moles of ammonia. Two moles of ammonia. One mole of nitrogen gas. One mole of nitrogen gas. Moles of ammonia cancel. Woo! And uh, let's see, they're, they're asking for molecules this time. Uh-oh, don't worry. I got it, I got it. So there are, in one mole of nitrogen gas, there are this many molecules. This special number will be given to you on your exam, also on the quiz. You do not need to memorize this number. Why? Because, as I understand from the discussion of the intro a few weeks ago, None of you are going to be chemists, so mm, let me just give that number to you, right? So 19 divided by 17 divided by 2 times that number. 19 divided by 17 divided by 2 times that number. Here we go, Glenn. 19 divided by 17 divided by 2 times that number. Boom! Hey, 3 point... Okay, how many significant figures do I need? 3 significant figures. Yes, there's only one measurement here. It's that one. It's three significant figures. This one is a measurement, but I could have taken this out to as many significant figures as I needed, up to maybe five, whatever the periodic table could give me. But I didn't. I only needed three. So three significant three three point three seven times ten to twenty third. Three point three seven times ten to the twenty third molecules. I believe there is a time limit on the quiz. There are 20 questions. That gives you three minutes per question. OMG! Perhaps I should extend that time limit a little bit, considering uh, the, um, the questions that I have been receiving online. By the way, folks, if you don't ask questions, I have to assume that you're doing great. <laughs> so thank you for those of you who have asked questions. And those of you who have not asked questions, would you please ask questions? All right. Uh, calculate the number of grams of solute in blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we want grams, and we're given milliliters, and we're given moles. I mean, molar. The capital M means molar. Looks like I'm getting some background noise, so let me close the door here. Please wait a moment. Excuse me. Okay, so I want to end up with grams on top, okay? So because I want to end up with grams on top, uh, let me just start with grams on top. Usually you start with uh, whatever number they give you, but in this case, they, they've given me two numbers. So I decide to start with grams on top. Is that the only way to do this problem? No, you can actually do this problem however you like. But you just have to make sure that you end that, that you end up with grams on top. To ensure that I end up with grams on top, let me just start with grams on top. So grams of solute. Solute is the stuff that's dissolved. This is the solution. That means this is the stuff that's dissolved. So I have grams of NaCl on top. The grams of NaCl is not given in this problem. However, I do see that the solution is 1.2 molar. Remember that molar means moles per liter. 
that means I'm going to need a number of moles here. That means I'm going to have to convert from, uh, from moles to grams or grams to moles. So that I'm just going to take advantage of that fact and put a one mole NaCl down here. And guess where I'm going to go to get the information of grams in one mole? That's right. I'm getting that from the periodic table. And it happens to be something like 58.1. Actually, let me um, just to save you some time, let me just say, ooh, if you have a Mac, you could totally do this. But don't do this on the quiz or the exam. You're going to have to use this puppy on the quiz or the exam, OK, <clears throat> like this. Na, and then you add that number to Cl. Okay, um, there there is a product table given to you on the quiz or the exam. The proctor will not let you use such a fancy tool like this or a fancy online product table like this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fifty-eight point four. So I was wrong. It's not fifty-eight point one. It's fifty-eight point four. So it's fifty-eight point four four grams NaCl in one mole of NaCl. Uh, let's see. Now I have moles, but I want grams. So I'm going to cross out the moles. Where can I get a mole here to cross out? Is that a mole? No. Is that a mole? No. But yes, it is a mole. See, it's moles per liter. So it's 1.2 moles per liter. 1.2 moles NaCl in one liter of solution. So the moles NaCl cancel. Woo! And now I have liters. I need to cancel out the liters because they're asking for the answer in grams. Grams. This needs to be the only unit that's not crossed out. All right, where can I get liters here? Oh, there's milliliters. Okay, so I know that there are a thousand, there's one liter. For one liter, there are a thousand milliliters. Okay. And liters cancel out. Woo! And milli I have 300 milliliters. So this times 300 milliliters. Okay, so 558.44 times 1.2 divided by 1,000 times 300. I wish you could talk to me because I need help remembering that. 58.44, see, I already forgot. Times 1.2 divided by, times 1.2 divided by, oops, divided by 1,000. What was that? This is ridiculous. Times 300. Can I get a memory upgrade? 21.04, except there are only two significant figures right there. Boom, baby, two significant figures. So it's not 28 point, it's not 21.04, it's just 21. So the answer here is 21 what? Milliliters? Moles? No, grams. Grams of what? Grams of NaCl. That is how you do it, folks. Okay, that is not the only way to do this. You could easily have done this by starting with 1.2 mol molar NaCl. Like you would have written 1.2 moles NaCl divided by one liter, blah, 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 blah. You could also equally easily have done this, or maybe even more easily have done this by starting with 300 milliliters of, of solution, right? But the, the, the underlying method is the same no matter where you start. You just have to make sure that you end with grams on top somewhere. At the end, if you have grams on the bottom, then you need to start this in some other way. I have shown you my preferred way, which is to start with grams on top because I know I want to end with, I want to end up at some point with grams on top somewhere on the problem. All right, I already said that. Number four, the limiting reactant. Yeah. I posted for you a Khan Academy video about this, and uh, it is a very good video. There are two different methods to finding the limiting reactant. Uh, you could you could use um, the method where you assume that you have this much of this, and you calculate how much product you get. What product are we interested in? We're interested in water. So how much of the water you get. And then you assume you have this much of that. And you assume, and you calculate how much water you get. The one that gave you the lower amount of water is the correct one. It would be the limiting reactant. Okay. 
There is that method. The, the other method is to figure out if you have this much, how much of the other thing would you need? Okay. Now, I don't care um, which method you use. You may use whatever method you prefer. In this case, I'm going to use this method where I figure out how much water I get from here, I figure out how much water I get from here, and I'm going to use the lower number. All right, here's, let, let, me, let, let me demonstrate. Start with 50.0 grams of PbOH4. This is lead 4 hydroxide. Right now, I go to the periodic table to add these up, except in the interests of your time watching this video, I'm going to use Mr. Fancy Mac tool. This is free, by the way, if you use a Mac. 275.232 grams per mole. All right, so that's going to be... That's going to be... That's going to be... 275.232 grams in one mole of PbOH4. PbOH4. Lead. Nasty stuff, really. So the grams of PbOH4 cancel. Woo! Right now the moles. I'm looking for water here, so there's one PbOH4 for four waters. There's one mole of PbOH4 for four moles of water. PbOH4, PbOH4, for four moles of water. PbOH4 canceled. Woo! And then four moles of water. Now um, they're act they're asking for mass in grams. Okay, but I don't need to calculate that yet. I'm just going to find the moles of water. That, that come from 50 grams of PBOH4, and then I'm going to find the moles of water that come from 50 grams of H2SO4, and I'm going to use the lower number. I will explain why in a moment, but I think you already know why, because presumably you have watched the Khan Academy video on this subject. That guy, Sal Khan, a man, some type of genius. I mean, if only I could be so smart. I mean, if the, if the whole world were so smart, then I think we would have, like, flying cars and stuff like that times 4 divided by 275.232, and that's it. All right, 0. 0.72, 0. 0.727. So this is 0. 0.727 moles of, of what? Of PB OH4. No, 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 that's not right. It's moles of water, right? Because... Moles of water are not crossed out, but all the PBOH4s are crossed out. Right? Now let's do that same problem with 50 grams of H2SO4, which is this reactant. Okay? Change colors just to make this a little neater, if that were possible. So, uh, 50 grams of H2SO4. And I convert this to moles. H2SO4, people. H2S, oops, H, H2SO4. It's 98.086. It's 98.086 grams in one mole, oops, one mole of H2SO4. Grams cancel with the, uh, this is supposed to be grams, sorry about that. Grams and grams cancel. Now we have moles of H2SO4, and there are two moles of H2SO4 that produce four moles of water. So two moles uh, to four moles, two moles of H2SO4, don't get lazy here, four moles of water. Moles of H2SO4, ah, woo! they cancel, and four moles of water. So you 50 divided by 98. Uh, so 50, whoops, 50, whoops, 50 divided by the, 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 the times 4, 2.04, the creation of the years, yes, 
All right, so I don't even have to write this down. Look, see, it's two something moles. It's two point something. That's way more than 0.727 moles. That means this, 0.727, this is the correct answer. That's how many moles of water you get. And this is a limiting reactant, PBOH4. That is the limiting reactant, right? So the determined limiting reactant, that's what it is, PBOH4. And the mass in grams of water, that's what it is, 0.727 moles of water. Okay. Those of you who forgot or, or who were not listening when Sal Khan was explaining this in his video, I think he used the other method, but the, the concept is still the same. Uh, the, the, the limiting reactant here is the one that you don't have enough of in order to use all of the other reactant. When you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, no, that's a bad example. When you make a cheese sandwich, you use two slices of bread and one hunk of cheese. If you want to make three cheese sandwiches, you need three hunks of cheese and six slices of bread, right? Right. What if you have four hunks of cheese and four slices of bread? Can you make four cheese sandwiches? No. Strictly speaking, you can't because you only have four slices of bread. What's the largest number of sandwiches you can make? That's right, two sandwiches because each sandwich requires two slices of bread. What does this mean? This means that the bread was the limiting reactant. I have excess cheese. You can give it to the cheese-loving person in your family just without the bread. So this is the same exact thing. You've got lead 4 hydroxide and sulfuric acid. You have 50 grams of this and 50 grams of this, but look, you need um, a certain amount of lead hydroxide and a certain amount of sulfuric acid to make this, this, this water liquid in this equation. So one of these is like the bread and one of these is like the cheese. In this case, it's the lead hydroxide that is like the bread because this is limiting. If I use all my lead hydroxide, I can only make this much water. If I use all my sulfuric acid, assuming I had all the lead hydroxide I needed, I could make so much more water. But that means that uh, I'm not going to use all my sulfuric acid because I don't have enough lead hydroxide to use all that sulfuric acid, just like I didn't have enough bread to use all my four hunks of cheese in the other example. That's what this is about, folks. Okay, okay. Yes, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh yeah, but I could just slice the hunk of cheese into a thinner... Yeah, none of that is allowed here, folks. You cannot slice atoms into smaller pieces because it wouldn't be the same atom anymore. You cannot slice molecules into like HSO2 and HO2. You can't do that because it wouldn't be the same molecule, right? Yes, thank you for your objection. It was... Uh, it was an intelligent question. Next problem. This is the chemical equation for flip. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the what's the real problem? The problem is give the percent yield if you get if you get 19 grams of glucose from 2.01 moles of carbon dioxide and 3.1 moles of water. This is a percent yield question, but it is actually a limiting reactant question disguised as a percent yield question. Don't worry. The wording of the question on the quiz is, 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 is very similar to the wording that I've got here. They, they use a different chemical equation. It's not photosynthesis, but the wording is the same. So there, are, will, there, will, there will be no surprises. Okay, so first, I need to find out how much glucose I actually make. Uh, I mean, I actually can make if I have this much carbon dioxide and this much water, okay? I need to know how much glucose, this is the glucose. Oh, I didn't say that, sorry. This is the glucose, folks. This is the glucose. I didn't say it in the problem, sorry. So, if I use all the carbon dioxide, how much glucose can I make? And then if I use all the water, how much glucose can I make? Now, in this case, um, I, 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 I will do the calculation, but let me just show you 
uh, that I don't actually need to do the calculation because this is this is already in moles. Two moles of carbon dioxide and three moles of water. Now it happens to be the case that the same number of moles of carbon dioxide are in the reactants as water. So if I have more moles of water, then I'm going to not be using all of them. If I have 2.01 moles of carbon dioxide, I'm going to need 2.01 moles of water. If I have 3.1 moles of water, I'm going to need 3.1 moles of carbon dioxide. But I don't have 3.1 moles of carbon dioxide. How much do I have? I have 2.01 moles of carbon dioxide. So the limiting reactant is going to be carbon dioxide. That was a little brain exercise. Here's how you would do it on paper. I have 2.01 moles of carbon dioxide. And I want to know how many moles of glucose I get. So there are six right here, six moles of carbon dioxide that are required to make one mole of glucose. I'll just call it C6 for short, okay? This is times, and that's gonna equal something like 0 0.33, 0 0.333, something like that. Not exactly, but you know, um, you should use your calculator. I'm just approximating for, for to save some time here. So this is going to be uh, the moles of carbon dioxide cancel. And this is going to be moles of glucose, C6. What about the other one? It's 3.10 moles of uh, water. And this is times um, 6 moles of water. Make 1 mole of glucose. I'll just call it C6 for now. And that's going to get me about 0.5. Okay, a little more than 0.5 here. Let me... It's going to be considerably more than 0.5 divided by 1. So 0 0.52, 0 0.517. This is 0 0.517. Moles of what? Water? No, water is canceled. Moles of glucose. Let's call, let's call it C6. All right. What's, what's smaller? This one is smaller. That means this is what's going to get made, and this is the limiting reactant, the carbon dioxide. Okay? So... For this problem, I don't care. I don't really care what the limiting reactant is. I just care what is it going to get made. It's going to be this. This lower number of glucose is going to be made. Now, how many grams is this? Why do I need grams? Because because they're asking for percent yield. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Actually, you already know, I think, because you saw the there. There is a. a uh, Khan Academy video that I posted about this also, this percent yield. Percent yield is going to be the grams that actually got produced divided by the grams that could have gotten produced. We call this the theoretical yield. Theor theoretical yield. What I have here in the limiting reactant calculation is the theoretical yield. This is the maximum amount of glucose that could have been produced given 2.01 moles of carbon dioxide and 3.1 moles of water. There's excess water. So, oh, by the way, because it's percent, you, you multiply this by 100%. I assume you know that already because we've had other problems about percent before. So the grams theoretical is 0.333. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I need to convert this to grams because this is moles. Do you see that? This is moles. Yeah. So um, we'll convert this to grams, and then we'll plug it in there. All right. So this right here is 0.333 moles, and the molar mass of glucose is about 180 point something grams in one mole of glucose. So the moles cancel. And um, 0.3, this is about 60.0. This is about 60, is it 60? Yes, this is about 60.0 grams of uh, glucose, All right? So the grams theoretical is about 60.0, and the grams actual is given here, 19 grams. Given. Grams cancel, the percent has no units except for percent. So it's going to be 19 over 60. 
18 divided by 60, and that's going to be 32%. You see that's 3, 0.3166, but there are only two significant figures in 19, so the answer can only have two significant figures. I round it to 32, and it's a percent. May I remind you folks that uh, your answer is may not be 32% here. I have not used a calculator right in, right in here. I did not use the calculator, so it might not be accurate. You, but your answer better be close to 32%. I mean, you might be 31, you might be 33, but you, you can't be like 47% or, or like 16%, okay? It's got to be close to 32, very close to 32. Uh, what volume? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so the volume. What are the units of volume? The units of volume are liters. So I need to find liters, but where are liters in the problem? They are right here. Remember that M means moles per liter. I made an announcement recently to tell you what needs to be memorized, and I forgot to include that. Um, it is important that you memorize the that moles per liter is the uh, the units for mo uh, concentration or molarity. I'll add that in here right now. Uh, one mole per one liter equals one molar. That's important. So you need to memorize that, folks, for your exam and for your quiz, quiz four, which is extra credit. Right. So. Um, how do I get liters on top? I want liters on top. How do I get it on top? I force it to be on top like this, one liter. Where is one liter in this problem? Right here, 0.11 moles per liter. That's what molar means, 0.11 moles per liter. That means 0.11 moles in one liter. Now I have to get rid of the moles. Well, here's grams of calcium chloride. So I know that there's there are in one mole of calcium chloride, a certain number of grams, which I could add up on the periodic table. I can see the time going to add it up on this cool Mac tool, 110.98. There are an awful lot of 98s today. Sorry about my handwriting. It's like, oh, sorry, grams did not cancel yet. The moles cancel. Woo! And now they gave me, what is this, 26 grams? My eyesight is going to 26 grams of calcium chloride. Calcium grams, calcium, woo! Okay, so, so I've got tw 26 divided by 0 0.11 divided by 110.98. So 26 divided by 0 0.11 divided by 110.98. I got 2.2, 2.1, 2.1, with two significant figures. See, that's two significant figures right there. You see that? One, two. Right, so it's, I already forgot what the answer was. 2.1. 2.1 grams calcium chloride. Now, does that, does that jive? 2.1 grams is kind of a lot for a 0.11 molar solution. It does not jive. Grams is not the answer. Grams got canceled. It's liters. Silly. I hope you caught that mistake before I did, folks. This is liters of calcium chloride solution. Right. Is 2.1 jive here? Let's see. 0.11 molar is very low. 26 grams. Um, if you have 26 grams, then it, because the molarity, the concentration is so low, to have 26 grams, you've got to have a lot of water. This better be dissolved in a lot of water because 0.11 is kind of low. But this is a lot of water. It's like a Pepsi bottle full of water. So there it is, folks. That answer jives. What is the concentration? What units do they want here? Concentration, that means molar. They want it in molar. They want moles per liter. Okay? So they want moles on top and liters on the bottom. Let's make sure that we give them moles on top. Let's see. Let's see. Moles on top right here. This is grams, so I know that in one mole of calcium hypochlorite uh, over here, calcium, 
calcium hypochlorite is OCl and then 2. 142.98. 142.98. Looks like I'm wanted on the floor. Oh well. 142.98 grams of calcium hypochlorite. Don't worry, mom is somewhere back there. Right. Oh, there's big sister. All right, so I have placed moles on top because I want to make sure I end up with moles on top, but I've got grams in the bottom, but I don't want grams in the bottom. I want liters in the bottom. So let me take this 16.2 grams. This is not related to anything. This is just what is given. 16.2 grams. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, there's a dog, yeah. 16.2 grams divided by... Now, you don't really have to divide this by anything, but you could divide this by the number of milliliters here, but you don't have to. So let me do this in the simplest way where I don't divide it by anything, okay? Oops. All right, all right. So I'm getting moles, folks. The grams cancel. And I'm getting moles. So I got 16.2 divided by 142.98. 16.2 divided by 142.98. I got 0.113 mol uh, moles. Is that right? Yes, three significant figures. So it's 0.113 moles. Looks like I'm being evicted here. So. As soon as I write this, you're going to have to uh, remember to divide it by liters because I want moles per liter. So you do that or make sure you've done that while I move. I am being evicted. I must move to another room. Ah, yes. Unplug Mr. Matt. All righty. Getting evicted, moving to another room. Sorry for the delay, folks. Okay. Okay, I am in another room. And we are all clear. So, remember that molarity is moles per liter. What does this mean? This means I have the moles, I must now divide it by liters. What does this mean? This means they're giving me 600 milliliters, so I need to figure out how many liters that is. Okay, I've lost the pen. Ah, oh, here it is. Here's the pen. So, I've got 600 milliliters. That happens to be 0 0.600 liters. How do I know that? Because 600, 600 milliliters if you convert this to liters, it's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So you end up with 0 0.600 liters. Okay. Knowing that, you take, whoops, too many undoes. Knowing that, you take what you know about molarity, moles per liter, and you take that, your moles, and you divide it by your liters. And you get 0.133 divided by 0 0.600. Woo! 0 0.133 divided by 0 0.6. And that's 0 0.222. Big M. That's molarity. 0.222 molar. Technically, the M should be italicized. So technically, you would underline it if you're handwriting it. But that's okay. 0.22 molar is the answer. Okay? Now, you'll notice that I had to do this in two separate steps. You don't have to do it in two separate steps. You could easily just put the 600, uh, the, the 0.6, okay. you could easily put the 600 um, milliliters down here and then proceed like that. Why? Because 
in this problem, they've dissolved 16.2 grams of this stuff in 600 milliliters of solution. So this stuff is 600 milliliters. So, you know, you could have done... Should I do it for you? Just, just for those of you who don't like the two-step process? Yes, I'll do it for you. You could have said milliliters are not what we want. We want liters. So you could have done this. This is moles over liters. So you get uh, the same answer, 0.222. Mola. That uh, is it 16,000 divided by some huge number? Yes, that's right. So, either way, folks, to me, the first way seems a little simpler to work out in your brain, but to some people with different brains, that could be you, this all everything at once method might, uh, might be more appealing. Okay, that is it for this video. There will be I think three more videos for the rest of the problems because there are 19 practice problems and there are 20 problems on the actual quiz. Bye!